Hi, I'm Scott Aram. I'm the uh, owner of South Racing and this is my ninth Dakar. Uh, welcome to the Bivouac. The key figures, we've got uh, two 6x6 six six assistance trucks, one race T4 truck, five assistance vehicles and of course the two racing rangers. They carry the 26 team members on the Dakar. Um, the trucks themselves, they, they are the workhorses of the Dakar. The 6x6s six are loaded with 12 tons of freight. Uh, including the 112 tyres which the Rangers use for the Dakar from Michelin and uh, all the spare parts to, to keep the Rangers in top condition for the, for the rally. I think it's a, a great combination of people. The, the project obviously having been started out of South Africa, we've got a lot of good guys out of South Africa, young guys who are on their first Dakar who have proved themselves capable of doing the job. And we've got a, a bunch of experienced guys from different fields of motorsport, from Dakar, from WRC. Uh, who are there to support and also to mentor them and at the same time uh, have, a, have a little bit of fun along the way. Well the conditions we actually face uh, start before we even get to Dakar. Uh, most of the time if we're packing the trucks in Europe it's in the middle of winter so we start in minus two, minus three. If we're lucky, uh, sometimes a bit unlucky with snow, rain, sleet up to minus eight or minus twelve like we had this year um, and the trucks then go to La Havre which is notoriously cold on the Atlantic coast uh, when we get to Buenos Aires, temperature shock, temperature change. We had this year with 38 degrees and humidity, so definitely a shock to the body. Um, the extreme conditions, Dakar is extreme just by the definition. Um, so extreme temperatures followed up by dust. Um, that we cross the Andes at six degrees. Uh, the race changes daily, if not hourly. Um, in Salta, we had everything from sunshine to rain to torrential rain to mud. Um, and you have to be prepared for everything or adapt to it as best as possible. If I knew the answer to that, I'd tell you, but Dakar is just, uh, it's a challenge. It's, it's, it's just, there's so many, so many, so many different, uh, different aspects to it which can influence in so many different ways from the, the personal, uh, personal side to the mental side of it. Obviously the, the extreme environment we work in, um, the preparation is obviously key. Um, for Dakar you always do need a lot of luck. Uh, a lot of people think they can come and beat the Dakar just on pure preparation, pure skill. You need to have the cookie crumbling your way a few days. Um, we didn't have it at the start and now it seems to be moving. I'm not going to jinx it just yet. Uh, but I think the whole thing is that the Dakar is a, it's a, it's still an adventure, it's a challenge. Uh, you ch first of all you challenge yourself, whether it's the sleep deprivation, whether it's the climate we're working, whether it's getting on with everybody. Um, but it's also a challenge to say, well, I made it, I got from the bivouac, I got to the next bivouac, I crossed the Andes at 4,800 meters. There's a lot of, uh, because of the road sections, there's a lot of time and a lot of a personal element to it where you have time to reflect on it. And a lot of the time, the most reflection is actually when you get home after Dakar and you have that chance to decompress and sort of, oh, I did that. And then you sort of go into the phase of hating it, like any extreme marathon event. And then two months later, you can't wait to start it all over again. Preparation for next year's Dakar starts the, the day after the, the one year on finishes. Um, normally the ASO will, give, will release the, the location of the finish of the event and, or the start of the event and that gives us our chance to start booking the hotel rooms. Uh, we start in, we start in uh, March and uh, by May we've already booked all the hotel rooms for the, for the event. Um, moving on from there we, we start the preparation for the spare parts and the development after testing during the year. Uh, generally by September we, we set the specifications for the race vehicles. That then gives us uh, the spare parts requirements which we take into Dakar. And uh, by November most of the parts have been delivered by the various suppliers from around the globe and packed and prepared to go to Dakar. The numbers are quite staggering. We have seven and a half tonnes of air freight um, which, is which was flown in from South Africa. Um, together with all the various parts which came from Europe, the 112 Michelin tyres, rims which go with that. Then we start with all the logistic, logistic equipment from the tents to the tables to the ground sheets uh, to the coffee capsules to the 1,500 cups of coffee which come in the race. Um, and it's a machine which moves daily. It's not, it doesn't sit still, it doesn't stand still, it doesn't know working hours. And a lot of the time you really have to adapt to everything and you have, whatever you have with you is what you have for the race. Um, and fortunately in South, South America you can still make a plan but it, it gets expensive and difficult. 
morning starts anywhere from, depending on which vehicle you're in, from 3.30 in the morning. Um, most of the time by 6 o'clock the, the team and the vehicles have left the bivouac. Uh, all, the, all the equipment, the sleeping equipment, the tents have been packed up and then we start the road section which is anywhere between 300 kilometers a day uh, up to 800. We follow the assistance route which takes us to the next bivouac. Uh, upon arriving in the bivouac the, we unload, we set up the bivouac which includes uh, all the ground sheets, the tents, uh, all the power cables. We have a 50 kV generator on the trucks which powers the bivouac. Um, and all the, all the Mastercraft tools and DeWalt power tools ready for the race car to come in. Once the race car gets into the bivouac, which is generally between 3 to 7 o'clock in the evening, in a normal racing day, obviously if we've had problems that can be a lot later, uh, the car is uh, thoroughly checked by the mechanics, uh, which takes anywhere between uh, four, to, 4 to 6 hours, again purely depending on the length of the stage and what happened on the day before. Uh, once that's done, most of the equipment is packed up, the guys uh, bed down for the night and the next morning pack them in the trucks and off we go again.